Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to show you what I consider to be the three biggest mistakes of the process of object mapping in C Sharp. And no, the first one is not don't use a library like AutoMapper. I've already talked about that in a separate video, you can check that out. What I'm going to show you here is I'm going to assume you might be using a library or you might not be using a library to implement object mapping and then we're going to take it from there because these apply everywhere, whether you're using a library or you're not. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that I just launched my brand new course from Zero to Hero, logging.net on domtrain.com. Now, I'm extremely proud of this because logging is such a fundamental of every .NET application, no matter what type of application is, whether that's a desktop app, an API, a web app, a game, anything can have logging in it and it's also a cross-cutting concern, meaning that it can actually cut through any type of layers that you might have in your application. It is super important to have mastery over it, especially with modern tooling, and this course achieves that. We start from some very basics, assuming that you don't really know much about logging, into some deep dives, into some more advanced features, and then we end up covering all of the advanced features and also some high performance features. And then on top of that, because I know how important it is and how much it is used, I have a dedicated section on Serilog, a third party library for logging that most companies out there is using. So you can have mastery over that as well. Now to celebrate the launch, I'm offering the first 400 of you a massive 20% discount code. So go at checkout and use log20 to claim a 20% discount code at your purchase. Again, that's for the first 400 of you and they do tend to go quickly. So I hope you enjoy the course and now back to the video. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application over here. It doesn't really have anything. We're gonna be playing with these folders instead and I'm going to use them to demonstrate each example. And the first one is injecting business logic into your mapper. That is hands down one of the most dangerous ones because it is so easy to do. Let's take a look at this. What I have here is this accounts folder and I have this account object. So the, let's assume that this is sort of my domain object where I have the salutation, the first name, middle name, last name, email, password, and whether they opted in for communication or not, and so on. Now, that's not how I would model that account, but I actually did find this online in a real application. That's why I'm using it. And then what I have here is a new account request. So assume that this is coming from some API or from some web UI, and I'm taking this new account request and I want to translate it into my account object over here. Now, you can also assume that this object would be on the UI layer and this object would be on the domain or application layer. The reason why I have them both in the same place is to make this easier to follow. But assume that they also live in different projects. So what you might have is, if you're using AutoMapper, a mapping profile like this. Now, what I want to stress here is that this is a real mapper that existed in a project for years. And I'm going to show you where I found this in a second. But as you can see, we map salutation to title, then the rest have the same name. Then we ignore a couple of properties like the ID and the account type because they have default values. And then we map communication opt-in into the agree newsletter because that's how business people work. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a password map because the account object has a password as a string. And then that parameter is actually using the text password one exclamation mark and then the date time now to set sort of the temporary default password for that user. Now, besides the fact that this is largely dangerous and you should never, ever, ever deal with passwords like that, this is also an example of hiding business logic into your mapper. And in case you're wondering where I got this from, it is an actual post from a real application in Reddit under programming horror. This was real. Now, even if you actually go and fix this, if, for example, you go ahead and you say, no, I'm going to use the random number generator here and say, hey, give me a hex string of 16 parameters in lowercase. Even if you do something like that, this is still injecting business logic into your application. Your mapper should not know how to create passwords. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make when it comes down to mappers because you will assume that this belongs here, but it really, really doesn't. And some people don't like doing something like this. So what they end up doing is actually they start injecting services into the mapper. So you might see something like an account service being injected in here. And then because this account service has a generate default password method, so I'm going to say account service dot generate temporary password, they're tempted to do something like this. But this still violates the injection of business logic into your mapper. This should not be in here. Do not do this. Even something as simple as this 
is very, very dangerous. When someone starts debugging the application, and by the way, this is something that's very hard to debug in the first place, but when someone starts debugging the application, they're going to be like, where the hell is this new password coming from? And it's very hard to find the mapper. Not only that, but it just does not belong here. It is something that should be done into the account service, I guess, when you create that profile with the temporary password. So rule number one, stop injecting business logic into your mapper of any form. And that actually, especially with the injection over here, leads into rule number two. And it has to do with mocking. Now let's take a look at this one over here. What I have is this account service. Now again, dummy service, but what is happening here is I'm injecting the iMapper interface of AutoMapper, and this could be iMapper of any other library. And then I have the mapping process here from a new account request to the account. Now we already established that this is bad because this mapping process has business logic in it. I would also argue there is nothing auto about what we just saw. So why the hell are you using a library anyway? But what I'm trying to point out here is that we're injecting an I mapper into this class. So when the time comes to test this class, you might be very tempted to do something like this. We have the system under test, which is the account service over here in our unit test. And then you have a substitute or a mock for your iMapper. I've seen this a lot. So people actually mock the iMapper interface that is being injected into the class. And then over here, they say, yeah, for this map, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and write the mapper manually, which completely defeats the purpose of using an auto mapper or a mapping library in the first place. The mapping process is part of what the method is doing, what that unit that you're testing is doing. You should never, never, ever have to mock your iMapper. What you should be doing instead is actually using the thing. What is the value in you saying, yeah, this critical part of my application, which in this case also has business logic, by the way, I don't want to take any of that into account. I'm going to tell you what is going to happen. And that's something unique just in the test. What are you trying to achieve here? Take that mocking out, remove it completely, and load your profiles properly. So if you need a mapper for your tests, then simply say, in this case, because I'm using auto mapper, new mapper configuration, and then say, add profile, new account mapping profile, and then say, create mapper and pass that mapper down, the real thing. You're going to get so much more value by actually using the real thing than by just removing it. You're creating bad tests by doing something like that. Just do not. And if you want to know more about unit testing, I do have a course on Dome Train. And you know who else agrees? Jimmy Bogart, the guy who actually made AutoMapper. Now, can we trust him? Because he did make AutoMapper. I'm going to leave that to you. But my opinion is, for the love of God, do not mock your mappers. And you might say, I need to mock my mapper because I'm injecting service into my mapper. Yeah, that is your problem. And you're exposing your problem by not mocking your mapper. So that's the thing you want to deal with. The mapper should be doing one very, very clear job, mapping from one object to the other. That is it. Anything else outside of that is the responsibility of something else. The last point has to do with people trying to do manual mapping in what I consider to be the wrong way. So let's take a look at this Spotify folder. I have a Spotify album. I've trimmed it down. Normally it's way, way, way bigger. And I have a Spotify album DTO. This is coming from the Spotify API. And this is something I have in my application. Now, usually because again, these two things live in different layers, the DTO would live into the UI layer and the Spotify album would live into the domain layer. In this case, I'm not doing it to make the video easier to follow. I've seen two things that I absolutely hate and I do not recommend to anyone. The first one is if you want to create a Spotify album DTO, for example, out of the domain object, then you might be tempted to do something like this. You create a constructor and you say, hey, I have the Spotify album object. Why don't I create a constructor where I pass the Spotify album object into the DTO or, or the UI object, basically? And then I initialize everything here. So you end up with a mapper like this. Now, this has two problems. The first one is... Well, you cannot really do the opposite. You cannot go to the Spotify album here and do the same if the two objects live in separate projects because you cannot have a circular dependency. So you're going to have to re-architect your solution to facilitate something like this, which is uh, bad. But even if you could figure that out effectively in some way, this is not something I would recommend to anyone because why should your DTO or why should your domain object 
know how to be constructed based on a different object, which is not necessarily based on a domain concern, but it is based on an architectural concern. The fact that you have an, an album object or a DTO object and you want to convert it into the domain. Why? What's the value? What is this class gaining out of this? And this is not the only way I've seen this done. The other way I've seen this done is like this. People would go ahead and use an implicit or an explicit operator to hardcast or autocast from one type to the other and write their mapping logic in here. Why should this object know how to be converted to a DTO? It's a different thing to have sort of a value object that is like the Celsius temperature and that can be converted into a decimal or a double or a float. I don't know how you measure temperature, but it's a different thing for that to have an implicit or explicit operator because that is a domain concern that makes sense and a different thing to try to cram architectural concerns into the same class on things that they just fundamentally shouldn't know. What's the value of this object knowing how to be built from another object that is just a sister object that looks sort of the same, but from a different concern. It, to me, it just does not make sense. So what I recommend if you're going to go with a manual mapper is just make a map to domain or map to DTO or map to contract method, extension method that is, on the object. And then you can have it in any layer you want. Usually you have an upstream sort of flow. So each layer can have its own concerns with its own mappers and be done with it. And if you need anything in your mapper, just put it in here. Your objects don't have to know about any of that. But now I want to know from you, how do you feel about all these points? And do you have any mistakes or pet peeves of your own when it comes to object mapping? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you in this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.